so in our time that we're we're talking about here maybe can you can you paint us a picture of what jerusalem judea what that area is like you know right around 160 bce you know who are the major political players in this this region absolutely thank you um 160 is a is almost like a pivotal date in this time period in this world so and there's a lot of different players at play in judea exists of the city of jerusalem and the hill land and the lowlands uh, and it's bordered by regions like uh, samaria in the north and edomia in the south and they are part of imperial worlds right so at this time period it's part of the world of the seleucid empire and i know we'll talk about that a little bit in, in, in later but around 160 groups clearly there are different directions of expressions in judea about how one should interact with one's neighbors but also with these imperial powers that are coming by and collecting taxes and in the 170s there is the group in charge is and we'll talk about that in a little bit is really indicating that they want to adopt certain practices uh, and there's a very famous episode where people in jerusalem seem to adopt at least that's what we're told in the ancient sources we have no physical evidence of this seem to adopt um, the idea that there should be a gymnasium. A gymnasium is a, is a Greek cultural institution where young male uh, members of the community exercise and get schooled and get trained. Uh, uh, and there are other parts of the Judean community that react really strongly to it, negatively. Uh, some very positively and, and others really negatively. So in around 160 is the time when, after this has all boiled up in the 70s, when apparently now, uh, a different group is, seems to be in charge of one part of the political voice of Judea, and that is the group of the Maccabees. And that group seems to uh, want to focus on what real Judean values. We have to talk about that, what that means. And so there's a lot of change that's been going on in the last six years, and a, and a war has been fought with the imperial overlords uh, uh, in that area. We also have to think and differentiate between the city and the countryside. Um, we have evidence that in Jerusalem, like in this time period, like people are presumably, uh, um, and we have lots of different people, but we don't have that good evidence. But in the countryside, for example, we have a lot of farmsteads where we can actually see um, where there's a lot of importation of goods from the wider Mediterranean world. Uh, uh, we have a lot of importation of, let's say, Greek silver work from the northern Greek world. And what we can't quite tell always at 100% is, are these Judean people inheriting this material or uh, and adapting it and adopting it? Or are these actually Greek settlers that have been put there by the imperial project? and uh, and they are living there their life uh, and they're importing the things that they used to have, like in a colonial world that that we're used to from a Western lens, like that you have uh, uh, groups that settle in other lands and then try to incorporate things that they know from the homeland. And so, but we do certainly in the material culture see that there is very different material culture going on. And there seems to be a period of where a lot of these things get questioned and, and it doesn't seem entirely peaceful. So there's, it sounds like, you know, not entirely clear from what evidence we have but there's seems to be possibilities or, or evidence that there's some combination of cultural influence of the greek world from the the seleucids on jerusalem and potentially we have some smaller greek settlers moving into the the countryside and that there is out of this some cultural tension and clashes coming coming to the forefront is, is this what we're getting at yeah absolutely and i mean i think it's very important that that we only know about some of these cultural clashes we only know about them through basically two sources and this is the first and the second book of maccabees they're literary sources and uh and they were rewritten later by a historian named flavius josephus right and 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 you and i talked about him in the, in the uh, before this podcast 
Um, and these sources are written by or in the context of the Hasmonean court, and they're certainly serving the Maccabees and the Maccabean political project, whatever that is, right? And so we have to take that into account. But within that context, within that those documents, it appears clear that there's a group of Judeans, and they're described very negatively, who really seem to think that, and they're not only externals, they're clearly internals and Judeans, uh, who seem to think that, you know, adopting some of these Greek cultural practices is, is the way forward for our community. Uh, and then there are others who disagree. And, and I think you you made an interesting point in some of our early discussions before we we got on the podcast here that the Maccabees, like the Book of the Maccabees, um, and this is literally history written by the victors, which I I thought was an interesting point that just never really crossed my mind because this is the ruling class after. Um, the conflict takes place. They are the ones who literally write the book of the Maccabees, which is in, in the Bible and and uh, by that historian Flavius Josephus that you and I were talking about earlier. Is that is that correct? Yeah. So the 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 it's it's a bit tricky, and not every scholar agrees. But I, it seems to be clear that the book of Maccabees were both written. One of them was translated into Greek. The second one was written in Greek for the first, like from its outset. And they are emerging as part of what we would we could probably describe as court host historiography. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so at the court of the Maccabees, somebody who we don't know uh, uh, writes these these court historiography in a time period when people still remember. This is not in the distant past, right? Uh, but writes the perspective really to to eulogize the new leaders and to to writen the story in in those individuals perspective and and this uh, you know just talking about this now is kind of bringing bells in my head um for for people who've been following the podcast I, we've been going through the history of alexander the great and of course literally everything that's written about him comes from i think it's aristobulus who was basically alexander's personal court um, press corps is, is, is this kind of, and that's Greek as well. Is, is there, am, am I making a, a link that doesn't exist here? Is there, is this like a Greek tradition or is this something completely different? Um, I think it's a combination of both. I think that that you bring up Alexander is, is a very interesting point. I mean, by the time the around 100, right, that's, that's roughly plus minus 20, well, more plus 20, 10, 20 years. Uh, around 100 BCE is when first one and two Maccabees are written, possibly a little earlier. Um, by that point, the Maccabean or Hasmonean is the same thing. Court, um, I think it's very clear that there's that it is a Hellenistic court. There's a lot of it that is very Judean about it, but there's also a lot of things that the type of kingship they exercise is is inspired by what they've experienced in the previous 150 years. And Alexander's court and Greek historiography at that court is is part of that world. So on that world, I would say there's definitely Greek influences. The genre in which this is expressed, I mean, on the one hand, two Maccabees clearly written in Greek, so absolutely. But the genre in which it is expressed, the tropes of language that are used, uh, and also the references to topography, like. Uh, Israel is mentioned. Uh, 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 the the relationship of the land is is really one that's steeped in the Hebrew Bible, and and so it's also deeply influenced by by Judean writings of the time period. 